నమస్కారములు పీప్స్ దిస్ ఇస్ హరీష్ షేర్ ఫ్రమ్ మెల్బర్న్ యాత్రి ఎం వై టి ఆన్ దిస్ ఛానల్ ఐ షేర్ మై థాట్స్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఒపీనియన్స్ ఆన్ ట్రావెల్ టెక్ అండ్ లైఫ్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్సెస్ ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు షేర్ హౌ ఐ కానా హెడ్ డిజైన్ దిస్ వన్ యాజ్ అ నంబర్ అండ్ ఐ యాక్చువల్లీ త్రీ డి ప్రింటెడ్ ఆన్ మై ప్రోసెస్ త్రీ డి ప్రింటర్ బ్యాక్ ఇన్ దయర్ దిస్ ఇస్ ప్రింటెడ్ ఆన్ ది సిల్వర్ పిఎల్ఎ ఫిలమెంట్ దట్ వాస్ ప్రొవైడెడ్ యాజ్ కాంప్లిమెంటరీ అలాంగ్ విత్ ద ప్రోసెస్ ప్రింటర్ దట్ ఐ బాట్ సో ఫర్ దిస్ త్రీ డి ప్రింట్ ఐ కానా హెడ్ అండ్ యూస్ ఫ్యూజన్ త్రీ సిక్స్టీ యాజ్ మై త్రీ డి ఆబ్జెక్ట్ డిజైనింగ్ సాఫ్ట్వేర్ ఐ కానా హెడ్ అండ్ యాక్చువల్లీ డిజైన్ ది ఎంటైర్ వన్ ఇన్ ఫ్యూజన్ త్రీ సిక్స్టీ అండ్ దట్ ఐవ్ యూస్ ప్రోసెస్ స్లైసర్ యాజ్ మై స్లైసింగ్ యాప్ టు స్లైస్ త్రీ సిక్స్టీ డిగ్రీస్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ఆర్ త్రీ డి ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ఇన్ టు మల్టిపుల్ లేయర్స్ సో దట్ యూ నో ఇట్ కెన్ జనరేట్ చీ కోడ్ అండ్ ఐ కెన్ యూస్ ద చీ కోడ్ టు గో హెడ్ అండ్ ప్రింటెడ్ ఆన్ మై ప్రూస్ ఆఫ్ ప్రింటర్ విచ్ ఇస్ ద హార్డ్వేర్ దట్ ఐమ్ యాక్చువల్ యూసింగ్ టు ప్రింటెడ్ సో లెట్స్ గో హెడ్ అండ్ లోక్ హౌ ఐ కాన్ హెడ్ అండ్ డిజైన్ the number 1 in the fusion 360 software so if you have not used 360 before this is how the interface looks in when you go into the design window where you are currently doing a two dimensional drawing so i'm just going to go ahead and select a plane uh, on the uh, three dimensional axis so that i can start drawing something on today now using the line tool i'm just going ahead and trying to sketch one now i do use the mirror option quite often so that you know i can maintain a a symmetry in my drawings uh, so that's basically more of a personal choice if you want you can use it or not similarly i try to use a little bit larger scale than what i would normally print so that it is easy for me to design and maintain proportions and once i'm actually printing i would normally scale scale it down based on the uh, size that i want to go ahead and actually print so now we have the base diagram of the one done uh, just then i go ahead and actually extrude it so that i can actually get a you know a proper block and try to see how it looks on 3d now once i'm done with that i've just made a copy of it so that i don't disturb my original copy or the original design uh, and then uh, this copied image is what i'm going to go ahead and edit it to get the final version this is just my current workflow process if you are interested to uh, you know understand how i go ahead and design 3d objects please go ahead and comment in the comment section and i'll go ahead and you know make a separate video about my workflow process of trying to design 3d objects so here i've gone ahead and you know create the curvatures so that in you know, the curved lines so that it's easy for me try to you know smoothen out the curves now once the 2d diagram is actually done being made then i would go ahead and actually extrude it so that then you know uh, we have the 3d image actually out there now once this image is actually available I'll try to start working on the edges so that it looks more towards what I wanted rather than you know what's currently there. I I normally prefer to have smooth edges. I do not prefer to have very sharp edges because uh, they sometimes can actually you know prick someone or or uh, uh, create an injury so I prefer smooth edges for most of my 3D prints. So I go ahead and use the uh, tool to go ahead and modify the corner so I just click on it and then you know give the amount of mm now this is more of a trial and error process i keep changing it till you know uh, the edge looks smooth and uh, symmetrical enough for the overall design so sometimes i do go back in design and try to you know undo things or uh, redo it that's why the timeline is there before that's the beauty and flexibility of fusion 360 that i can actually go back in timeline try to edit the sketch or try to you know uh, edit the pull push or the chamfer or any of those uh, uh, you know tools actually out there uh, in order to get the desired result that i want but sometimes i would just delete it off and completely redo it to figure out you know whether it's making sense to me or not so that's the original one obviously made a component out of it and i'm going to extract it out and uh, you know try to look for the prusa slicer now this is where fusion 360 allows you to go ahead and actually 3d print the object you would actually prototype or generate and i've chosen the process slicer to go ahead and you know to export the 3d object as a star 3dp or a you know stl kind of a format file into process slicer and once it's into process slicer the proportions that i've designed obviously are much larger than my print base so i would actually use the scaling uh you know tool which is available in the process slicer and I scale it down to make sense of it then try to go ahead and actually slice the uh, object so that you know you can generate a g code out of it so once the g code is generated obviously you know, i try to look for a couple of options whether supports are needed not needed how much amount of infill is needed 
obviously the slicer was recommending 20% but you know I wanted to have a lesser infill the reason being is uh, I want this number to be a bit light so that I can actually use in multiple uh, uh, use cases in, in multiple scenarios so I just try to always see you know how it's going to look like every time you make a change you got to actually slice it again so so that the fresh G code is actually generated then finally when I'm happy with everything I would go ahead and save the G code on the memory card and then obviously I check the memory card and try to load it into the 3d printer so let's go ahead and on the uh, Prusa so bond it's getting booted up there we go it's booted up uh, now I have to go ahead and you know obviously insert the uh, memory card on this side on the left hand side so go ahead oh, oh. face it towards me enter in so the pins are actually facing towards me it's just inserted in so automatically it's auto recognized I can come to PS labs and do it but first I would like to change my filament because currently what I'm having loaded here is a PETG filament, PETG, and I want to load my PLA filament, actually the grey color one, so I just click on OK, then come to unload filament, and I will say mine is PETG, so as you can see, automatically it's moving up. So it's going to preheat. So as you can see here, it's actually preheating uh, up to 230 degrees Celsius. And then once it preheats, uh, I'll be able to, you know, pull this off. So in meanwhile, when I'm trying to prepare this one in, I just want to ensure that it's uh, having a sharp cut in it, in an angle. So I'd normally put it in an angle in this way, but also put my hand close to it. Otherwise this cut off piece would normally pop and fall all across the place. So just moving it hands across. There we go. So this is fallen here. Ready? So since I'm printing PET G, I also have to change my bed. So the bed is removed from the side. Just get the clean bed, which is there for uh, PET G. Line it, put it across pretty strong magnets. Uh, take my trusty alcohol. Oh, there you go. Unload the phone. So I can just oh press the knob. <coughs> Sorry. So I just spread it out. Right. So I'm using my trusty, you know, isopropyl alcohol to open it up. Yeah. Put it a bit on the cloth so that a gentle amount close it so that I don't spill it and then gently clean through great so this is done now I would come back and say auto load filament yeah so get it in there put it through the hole <coughs> so what you got to see here is the space where you know the existing PETG is actually spit out by the extruder and then the newer element is actually bought in and we got to wait for the color is correct. Now I don't see the color being exactly grey in my eyes so I would say no. So. It would spread a bit more out and now it's completely gray so that means you know the extruder the nozzle all of it is actually clean properly you're only having the PLA material coming out always use a cloth to just wipe it and we are good say yes now go back to info screen okay print from SD card and then the, for the folder that I've put in, smooth edge, touch this guy, click.
it first goes ahead and it calibrates itself in all the nine points if I'm not wrong uh, using the height sensor to build a profile and then it does a small you know a trial bead if you can see here that's the trial bead and then it'll start printing you know the actual print So if you see this, this means my nozzle is too low from a Z-axis standpoint of view, what I've calibrated last time. So my Z-axis is a bit off calibration. What it does is, you know, this reduces the life of the nozzle as well as the baseboard. So I got to be a bit careful next time. Hope you have actually enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you did. A sub would be absolutely awesome so that you can keep watching more content that I actually produce. And please to share it with your friends and colleagues, anyone whom you think would actually benefit from this content.